special birthday day because uh, we have the World Cup Mania Manager celebrates her birthday today. Maria from all the Bayern family. Znion Rozdienie Maria Oswaldokina. Alles Gute zum Geburtstag. qui a Nanter Selva tra virgolette sconfitto abbiamo visto arrivare all'ottimo secondo posto battuto da un Nanter Selva sempre forte Alexander Loginov perciò anche lui tra i favoriti ovviamente nella gara quest'oggi di Alto Adige a condizioni meteo pressoché perfette Mezzo, vediamo un po' pochi minuti zum Start und äh, wir sehen ein paar Aufwärmübungen in der sogenannten Strafrunde, die Strafrunde, die heute überhaupt nicht gebraucht wird, denn es gibt pro Fehlschuss heute eine ganze Strafminute. Also das ist ein schwerer Ruf.
His grandfather from Aberdeen, his grandmother uh, from Dundee. Actually, it's the other way around. His grandmum from uh, Aberdeen, his grandfather from uh, Dundee. Now living uh, or moved over to New Zealand, Rotorua, uh, his home initially. Bit smelly there if you've ever been there. But, uh, of course, does a lot of training at the snow farm in, in Wanaka. So we'll uh, follow him today. He's got a point to prove. Sapala of Finland. It's been a great season for the Finns. It certainly has, and uh, Tero Sapala, his, his father Timo, raced with him, was a very good shot as well. And I think uh, Tero Sapala, this season, with his two fifth positions, he really has landed, and I think he'll uh, have one eye on a podium very soon. Yeah, that would be good for the Finns. It's been a while since they've been on the top of the podium. Number nine, many of you will recognise Vettel Schorstad Christensen, the number two Norwegian so far this year. Simon Barko goes for Slovakia. Uh, his problems, you can see on the uh, stat sheet, is all about the shooting. 68, 66% hit rate, just not good enough uh, not to get in the top 10, not good enough to score World Cup points. It's not enough. And I think, Patrick, the day, this day, the 20 kilometer at one minute uh, per shot missed, uh, it's an opportunity for, well, for Thomas Bormolini, for many of the athletes that are, say, at two minutes, three minutes off the ski speed, an opportunity uh, to really have one of their best results by hitting 19 or 20 out of 20. Yeah, nicely balanced skier. There's another familiar figure. Jakob Fack, who of course got the silver medal in the individual in the uh, Olympic Games last time round, 2018. He got his last win way back in 2015. That would be winding the clock back if he could do it today. Dmitry Lazuski for Belarus, number five of 107 to start. And really had his best in uh, Hogfilson, I think it was. He got a top 10 in the sprint there, shooting clear. Yes, and a 23-year-old Lazuski, he's still learning his trade, and, and this is going to be a, a, a tough journey. Uh, over 640 metres of climb over this 20-kilometre. It's at altitude, nearly uh, 1,700 metres uh, at the highest point of the course. Chris Marsh for the Czech Republic. Another man who had a good run in the Olympic Games, finished seventh in the individual, missing just one target. Would have been very close to the podium, had all the shots gone down. There's the current world champion, Ligrid of Norway. And uh, he, of course, won the first individual this season. So can he make it three in a row? Here's Campbell Wright. Now, he did the uh, kangaroo hop it at the age of nine, uh, traveled down. And uh, really talented athlete, been trained actually by Luca Bormolini. And uh, I've had a lot of information from Mary Lee, who runs the uh, snow center up above Wanaka. And uh, very grateful for that. But uh, they were watching on, everyone really hoping that his results from last week in Rupolding were good enough to qualify. He had been allocated a slot by the IBU, but uh, apparently the New Zealand uh, Federation not taking it up. Well, yes, uh, I suppose if a selection criteria is uh, stated, then it has to be uh, adhered to. Uh, they wanted a top 16 position, uh, uh, not quite achieving that at 25th position, but uh, certainly uh, Campbell Wright, hope it goes well today for him. Christiansen, as I mentioned, number two in the Norwegian team. Had some great races in Annecy. Uh, you know, he's should be this should be his event really shouldn't it mike uh, with his level of shooting i think so and uh, just i was looking at uh, took a long time looking at some of the big names the good shooters as you say christensen for me one of them three times in his career he's managed to hit 20 out of 20 but only once in world cup he was at european championships he's achieved it ibu cup he's achieved it but once at world cup he certainly has the ability to date Jakob Fack now 35, eight wins in his career. And uh, I'm not convinced that he's been quick enough this season to win a race. But in biathlon, 
anything can happen. If the favourites, top ten favourites, all miss targets, then maybe his opportunity will come. Stirler Holm Ligrid, not quite as convincing with his form this season as he was last. Remember in that epic battle with Johannes Tingisbo for the overall title last year. Currently, he lies in ninth and Johannes Tingisbo in tenth. So those two are probably still exhausted from their efforts at the end of last season. Mentally, Patrick, and physically when they're challenging on a daily basis. But he really loves this race. Uh, Twelve podiums, four of those podiums have been in the individual race. And he hasn't really taken part in that many. In fact, he's taken part in four on the podium for each of them. Dmitry Shamiev, the 26-year-old, uh, well, racing for Romania. He's Russian from Egypt and uh, improving as the season goes. Martin Jaeger had a bit of a meltdown in the first stand in the World Championships, missing three. Uh, remember, every shot missed in the individual is a, a minute added to your time. Uh, and at the speed these guys go, a minute is a roughly a lap of the athletics track, about 400 metres. Not quite, maybe 380, somewhere around there, depending obviously on the conditions. Sapala with a good start, 6.4 inside the time set by David Zobel. He looks stronger every time he comes out. Now, Benny Dahl, what can he do? Two wins uh, in his career now. And the second best of the Germans, only seven points behind Kern. And I imagine, Mike, in every team, uh, not only do you want to be as far up the World Cup table as possible, but actually uh, quite a lot of status involved in being the highest ranked in your national team. There is, and it's all it's ego as well as uh, being uh, competitive, and, and it also does buy you the best possibility of your coaches placing you in the most favoured group. Shoma from the USA, the Americans with four Olympic spots. Top three teams getting six, then uh, what is it, next four or five get five. And then everyone down to 20th in the nation's ranks, uh, getting four places uh, in the race, but only four athletes allowed to go. So uh, you can't afford any in illness or injury in that case. And then uh, a number of nations with just one athlete going. Amanda Lightfoot, I know yesterday, was waiting to hear. I, I'm assuming, Mike, that uh, she didn't make the cut. Yeah, and fortunately that news came in 8 o'clock this morning and sadly she hasn't. Uh, no reserve uh, status for, for women in, in that uh, discipline, so sadly she hasn't made it. And to just go back to Amanda, she... Uh, Placed herself fifth at an IBU Cup from nearly 100 athletes. She skied faster than the winner in the individual down there in the IBU Cup uh, in Brescia or So it's a real pity uh, her form seemed to be just coming uh, to the top when she needed it. Yeah, well, just a little bit late to the, for the selection. But in terms of the Olympics, absolutely perfect. Yes, uh, you need to be on that flight, though. Khalili, the Russians uh, putting Babikov and Povenitsin in as their reserves. Khalili safely in that uh, Olympic squad of five. So back to the start and David Sobel uh, out on the course. Remember, it's a four kilometer loop for the individual and uh, he's into the range for the first time a sort of double loop in the in the woods it's quite a tricky area a track on a on a camber it's a decent time uh, this patrick into the course i think the winning time will be around 48 maybe 47 minutes today Worst possible start, uh, one minute added onto your time immediately, unsettling. Oh, yeah. 
Well, very expensive uh, two mistakes there for Zerbo. Maybe the fact that it's the first time he's worn bib number one. And the wind has picked up. If during the zeroing it was fairly steady, and now the wind is swirling around a little. It was quite strong from the left. Oh, two athletes uh, with two minute penalties. There's the, the indicator of how the wind is affecting the fall of those shots. Quite strong now from the left, and that'll put the nerves through all of the coaches. They need to inform their athletes on the track. Now, let's see how Ligrid is getting on. Christiansen on 5.36. He's uh, some way outside. A little bit of a surprise, but he's uh, what you might describe as a canny racer. We saw him taking it easy uh, in the early laps in Östersund when he won the individual there at the start of this season. Very first race of the season. a lot better uh, and that's the way it should go uh, a, a nice uh, happy nod from the coach Favre has had a second place uh, in the 20 kilometer here when he was racing so Formalini the only one of the first four to go clear Marsh certainly enough experience to clear the first five different breathing levels here at Antol 1600 meters um, even though some of them have spent the last uh, few days acclimatizing the Norwegians uh, have been up at altitude while the roof holding races were on uh, it's still pretty tough to race up here now Let's see what Campbell Wright can do. He's a good runner. He's a good triathlete as well. All round uh, athlete, not a bad shot either. That's a great start from him. 3.2 uh, inside. Uh, I think the New Zealanders might be regretting their decision, Mike. That's really impressive. The skiing is strong, Patrick, and uh, yes, and Roof holding last week, he only missed two targets from 30 shots fired. The sprint, then the pursuit following the sprint. Baklavik with two misses. Can't afford that at this level. Now, Christiansen, who uh, generally hits five out of five, he's got a decent cushion of 22 seconds. He really has skied hard. Just slightly right, but uh, good elevation. That one drops down to the right again. Low right. Is this going even further right? Well, it's a long way over. Uh, if it was six targets, Mike, I think the sixth one would have missed. Well, <laughs> as he went along, it seemed the wind was uh, pushing those, the fall of the shots further to the right. But he was confident. He didn't hesitate. A lovely, lovely flow through his routine. So Christiansen leading 9.23 already. Two minutes 21 between the first nine uh, after that first of five loops. Uh, we could see some big margins at the end of the day. Jakob Fack with the worst possible start. Very surprised he's 26 seconds off the pace of Christensen's pace into the range. Oh, 2.26. He's not going to enjoy the remaining 16 kilometers. Now, Ligerid, who's going for his third successive individual victory. And uh, with the ski speed he's had this year, it requires a 20 out of 20, I suspect. Everything in the same sort of hole at the moment, just drops that last one a fraction low, but Ziggy Mazze must be uh, happy enough with that. 
It was interesting watching Mazze and the Norwegian team during zeroing, Patrick. Uh, he gives them a lot of information, uh, giving all the different win scenarios. If it's from the left, you must click to, to the left. If it's settling, you must take your sights back. So he really does uh, pay a lot of attention to making sure all the athletes have his information. Well, Jaeger has had his uh, best ever result here, 14th. It was in a sprint, uh, what, four years ago? Shot the perfect score on that occasion. Benny Dole for shoot number one. Yeah, in fact, the fastest shot so far, but as you saw, he missed two. Campbell Wright, uh, just 27.1 seconds. World-class shooting from the... New Zealanders, as we see Benny Dole, very high position for Benny. That's uh, another nice shoot from him. Uh, 4.9 should go into second place. Is he going to get ahead of Ligrid? I think he may well do. He does, just outside that leading time. So uh, sandwiched in between the two Norwegians at the moment. And those are three very, very accomplished athletes, Christiansen, Dull and Ligerid. Uh, they certainly could feature come the end of the day. As Benny Dahl just heads out for a second rotation, he's never actually managed to achieve 20 hits from 20 shots in the individual previously. Now, Lukas Hoffer, two wins in his career. One of them came here. He shared a victory with uh, Schemp, Simon Schemp uh, way back in the day. Uh, what a race that was. And then, of course, getting a win at the end of last season in the sprint up in uh, Ustersen. That was a, a very, very popular win indeed. As we see Simonada into the range. Uh, the Austrians, Mike, no Landertinger, who, of course, got a bronze medal in this event in uh, Pyeongchang. And Julian Eberhardt still having problems. You may remember he took a big crash up in Ustersen. He's had headaches and head problems ever since. He was out doing some hard training today and uh, the headaches returned. Uh, he has ended his season with immediate effect. So that's desperately sad for him. That is so sad. I was happy to see that he was trying to make a comeback from, from his uh, negative setback up in uh, Ustersen. But a really sad day for him. Halili, uh, only the ninth fastest uh, from, what, 16 athletes into the range so far. And uh, that's a deficit time of 21 seconds to Christensen. Kalili, after a strong Junior World Championships, taken to the World Championships, shot the perfect score, and uh, finished sixth in this event. Uh, for a 21-year-old, I thought that was excellent. That will do. I don't think Kalili will be too worried about that deficit at the moment. Um, He's had, some very, he's had a few 19s, three 19s, I think, this season. He's had 120 in Annecy, as we see Justus Strello. That's an encouraging start for him. Just 25. And uh, keeps his uh, good record in the prone shooting. We saw Strello actually in uh, Ustersund at the start of the season. Got himself a few World Cup points. Uh, finished in the top 40 of three of the four races he did. Tadia Burke still well placed in the World Cup standings. Fourth position, 100 and what, 177, something like that, 177 points off Fionnier, the World Cup leader. We've only got this race plus eight to go this season, so only 540 points up for grabs if he is going to do what he did back in 2011. He's got to start winning race after race.
Interestingly, Patrick, that wind was very much from the right and all of uh, Terry Boats, uh, the fall of his shots were way over at nine o'clock of the, the small, the golf ball sized target that counts in the prone. So I would imagine Mazze will be uh, getting on the radio to the coaches to warn him of the potential to adjust next time. I was surprised looking at uh, Terry Abo's history in this event. Yes, he's been the world champion in this event, many, many podiums, but he hasn't actually hit all 20 targets. Maybe today. Maybe today. And maybe today he'll get himself uh, a rare win. But consistency really his strength as we have a look at the leaderboard. Uh, Norwegians dominating three of the top four. Benny Doll of Germany in third. Campbell Wright of New Zealand still stick it, sitting there in that fifth position at the moment. But we have the French still to come. And Emilia Jacqueline. Uh, has he got the temperament for an individual? We know that he's brilliant at the head to head. But uh, it'll be interesting to see whether he can control his race today as his teammate comes in. Keegan are now who has uh, got the news that he wanted. He will be on the flight to China. Question is, though, will he get a race? I think uh, in the mixed relay, he might uh, find himself racing. The program is uh, pretty full on, isn't it, at the Olympics? Well, Johannes Tingisbu, I, I hope that the high altitude camp, not far from Val de Fiemme at the top of the mountains there, I hope it has uh, built some confidence back in terms of his shooting. And his ski speed, I've heard, has improved. Well, it's a pretty good start position for Johannes, number 44. Just a minute exactly behind Emilia Jacquelin, as we see Loganoff, the winner of the sprint in Oberhof. Uh, didn't have quite such a successful week last week in Rupe holding but he's not hanging around this could be the fastest shoot we've seen so far but he leaves one standing and that's expensive he would have saved half a second but he's lost uh, 59 and a half with that one miss Lezuski, uh, sorry I was just going to say the second shoot Lazuski taking a, a good break there. I think that's sensible. The discipline to break is, doesn't always work. Here's Campbell Wright. That's a good recovery, having missed the first one. Christiansen yet to miss, but... Uh, Fair amount of breeze. There's the first miss. Snatched at that. And again. Oh, it's not going to be his day. It will not be his day. Now, that's uh, extraordinary from uh, Christiansen. The man you would put your money on to hit the five, or to hit uh, at least 18, probably 19 or 20 of the targets today. He throws three wide on one shoot. I find that uh, quite amazing, Patrick. The, the wind looked stable, his position looked strong, and he's, he was sheltered way down there on lane 29-30. The, the wind is, has less effect down there. Uh, I can't understand what happened there. Florent Cloud just settling for Belgium in the prone position, and uh, this is Lydride. Will he suffer the same fate as Christiansen? Not quite, not quite, but a miss is a miss. And uh, Anton Babikov gets five. Babikov and uh, Povenitsin, the two reserves in the Russian team. So he could do with uh, putting in a tremendous performance here. Ligride is out, 20.06 the time. Thank you. 
Good discipline, Leitner uh, deciding the wind is picking up from the right. He's adjusted six millimeters uh, to the right, and it's worked. Well, Felix Leitner has often shown us, especially in the mass start, four times into the range, uh, that he can hit 20 out of 20. Well, sadly, Benny Dole has uh, continued with the trend, uh, having never hit 20 out of 20 in, in an individual race. So, uh, zero, now two in terms of standing. Lukas Hofer uh, was one-tenth of a second away from third place last year. He missed two last year. He needs... 19 hits today, I think, to secure a podium. So it's very first shot, and if you are going to miss in this race, well, miss the first shot, then get the discipline back for the next 19. Now, let's see how Jacqueline has paced the uh, opening 2.7. He looks very relaxed. Uh, he's some way down on uh, Tavia Bird, but I think he'll be happy enough with that. Uh, he almost looks as though he's smiling as he's going along there, Mike. Looks very comfortable indeed. And, of course, he's this up. is a, a venue where he had so much success back in the World Championships. He certainly did. Uh, he, he kind of felt that he owned the stadium, didn't he? And he's that kind of athlete. He controls, owns the patch that he's on. Cloud needs to try and put the penalty loop behind him that he did in the relay in route holding. Another relay here. If he gets the opportunity, can make up for that. And uh, the French team is definitely a team you want to be in when it comes to the uh, Olympic relay, Mike. What have they got? Number one, number three in the World Cup standings. They've got number eight and number 12. On paper, the strongest nation of the year so far. They certainly are. Uh, Simon Eder, uh, well, that's uh, one and one. He has been on many podiums in this race. Anton Smolski, what a fantastic season he's had so far, and uh, he looks to be getting stronger and stronger. Be uh, fantastic if he can do something out in Beijing as we watch Khalili. Only one man has gone clear so far, that's Shamaev. But he doesn't have the ski speed to challenge, unfortunately. Khalili, on the other hand, does. 33 behind coming in. He's going to be at least 15 ahead when he exits. So uh, good shooting from Khalili. And certainly, Mike, since Christmas, the Russians have uh, improved dramatically. Yes, they, they certainly have. The, the Christmas break, they came back to Oberhof after the two-week break and uh, very much improved. Uh, just indicator, indicators that some are beginning to drop off a little uh, the last race in Ruth Holding. Well, everything about Daria Burr today, it's, it's looking very secure. Traditionally or historically, uh, as the race progresses, and especially on the last shoot, uh, sometimes that's where he has had issues, missing one or two. But right now, he's 38.9 uh, uh, ahead of Khalili. And uh, I must say, he's looking very smooth. 
Yeah, and he's still got the fastest time after the first shoot uh, with a lap time, including the shooting of 9.21. That, of course, is for the four-kilometre distance. Now, the French, uh, Jacqueline, eight seconds behind when we saw him at 2.7. He's let that increase to 16. Did we see the best of Jacqueline in Annecy? Well, it was certainly pretty remarkable what he did there. But five out of five, that will uh, boost his confidence. I think he's uh, taking it easy in the early stages. It feels that way, doesn't it? Especially, <laughs> he said he, he looked like he was smiling, so he, he looked very much that he was uh, holding himself back lap one. Yeah, Johannes with uh, a little wriggle of the elbows, trying to bed them down for this first prone shoot. The wind, wind is picking up, up. He's not got the easy conditions. And his ski speed has picked up. He's 15.6 ahead of his uh, older brother. So he starts with a five. Are we going to see him get his second win this season? It's very, very early days to be talking like that. Uh, but in the old days, Mike, you used to watch him and you doubted he was ever going to miss. Right now, you're almost nervous watching the prone shoot. Yes, uh, that has been the case, hasn't it? But there's a different energy. There's something different about him today. And, and I watched his zero. He looked very tense, very serious. He's often not that serious, but uh, today he was really back uh, in, in his zone, I think. Yeah, I thought Ligrid looked very nervous during the warm-up. Um, Christiansen was having a joke or two. Ligrid was having nothing of it. Uh, didn't want to be a part of that. And... Uh, his performance today, well, the first shoot was good. He missed one in the first stand. So a good stand from Loganoff back to Paul Malini. Well, that will keep him ahead of Sapala. Sapala has missed four. Uh, David Zobel, who was the first away, has missed four. And um, Bormalini, with just two misses, finds himself uh, 125 ahead of uh, his nearest rival after that third shoot. Here comes Christensen again after that disastrous first stand. All the way around, Patrick, the, the second four-kilometre lap, his mind would have been pretty mixed up, missing three out of five in the first stand. I like the way he read the flags, looking at the wind flags, how the wind is affecting his lane. That's much better. Much slower than his uh, first five hits in the prone uh, first time in, but uh, at 31.9 seconds, all that matters is the targets go down. Campbell Wright again, solid uh, shooting, 32.5 seconds, so he wasn't pushing the pace in terms of shooting speed. really needs to go clear from here on in if he's gonna do what he did in Ostersund earlier on this year So leg read uh, back to where he normally is in this event. Five out of five again the second time.
<laughs> Benny Dole, he always looks like he's pushing himself to the absolute limit in terms of his ski speed. Well, Benny Dahl, uh, a lot of movement when he gets down into his position. Uh, Lukas Hoffer, he missed two out of 20 last year. He's missed three out of 10 this year. So his chance again of a top five and so close to the podium last year, it's unlikely. But the wind really is picking up from the left again. So Lukas Hofer, uh, his ski speed early season was, was poor in terms of his normal standard. Uh, he had a break, the ski speed has come back, but sadly, at 70% uh, hit rate from the first 10, he needs to improve that for the second 10 shots coming up. Molski, uh, he's taking his time to, uh, well, adjusting his sights before he's got into position. I like the way he takes all the tension there, uh, the movement of the fingers, slight movement through the hips as he got down into position. Paul Schomer getting five out of five again. And the ideal start for Anton Smolski. <laughs> so, uh, Anton Fiamaye, the yellow bib on his shoulders, he's missed the first shot. Uh, just under 15 seconds was he pushing the pace to the first shot it's cost him a minute the weather is coming on strong right now well that adjustment really has paid off he missed the first look at the flags uh, it's spinning around uh, the wind was coming towards him there oh this is a very very tough time for shooting you can see the for Kalili the snow is getting blown up all around him. The rifle is so stable throughout the whole procedure. Ah, what a pity. I thought that was a, a certainty, that last shot. So only one target missed from 15. Well, Tarja Boo uh, has a lead, as you can see, uh, 107 coming into the range. Ah, fantastic. Absolutely brilliant performance from Tarja Boo. So, he really is the man to catch. Slightly slower on the range there, but that doesn't matter. It's uh, at one minute penalty for each target missed. You can take your time, it, it certainly does help the recovery uh, up at this high altitude location. Well, Terry Abo uh, coming into today, he had uh, 50 podiums in his career, 12 of them victories, and here's his younger brother. He has 53 victories to his career. <laughs> so
so Johannes Tingis Bo is quite sheltered there where he's firing. He's missed two. Well, damage limitation. They managed to get shots four and five. So that's a big setback. Uh, not even at half distance in uh, Johannes Tingis Bo's race. Well, there he is, 136 behind. His ski speed is excellent. Certainly looks like uh, all of his ski strength is coming back. There it is after uh, two, two times into the range. Uh, one prone, one stand. Terry Abo ahead uh, of Shakla by 24.5 seconds. Babikov, he's always good at uh, the four times into the range, the individual race. Uh, so far, so good for him. So Dominic Vindish underway. He really has picked his ski speed up. A very poor start to his season. He was sent back to IBU Cup Racing. Did well there, brought back into the World Cup team. Well, you can just hear the intensity the high altitude racing uh, has on the body. Trying to get as much uh, oxygen in as you possibly can. Oh. Four targets missed for Giganat. Now the winner from last year, Alexander Loginov. He hit all 20 last year. On this day. So far, only two people have been through that third shoot with uh, out missing a target. Shamiev still there. Talia Burt has done it as well. Consequently, he leads with that time of 28.58. Uh, apologies for that, Mike's like technical uh, issue. I was, uh, I was suddenly immersed in the Australian Open. <laughs> Good to have you back. Formalini, it's always difficult, isn't it? The Italians here. Um, Racing at home, it's the same for all the nations at Stage World Cups. Uh, I think three's okay today. In fact, the last Italian, the only Italian to win, uh, was uh, Johann Passler uh, way back in 1988 in this race. But so many nations have a, a poor record like that in terms of the last win. But the Germans had one in the last 13 seasons in the individual races. Yeah. That last one from uh, Christensen, that could be crucial in terms of uh, World Cup points. Four misses, there will be many better than that today. Hidden Salu may be one of them, he makes it 14 out of 15. Good uh, shooting from the Finn. 2.21 behind in terms of time, having missed one. Only seven through that fourth shoot so far. <laughs> Just not quite as relaxed as last year, Mike. He didn't seem to have a care in the world last year, but uh, suddenly there's a lot of expectation on his shoulders and he throws two in that last shoot. And it was the fourth shot that was his strong point last season. Amazing. Uh, you mentioned the tension, the seriousness prior to the race. Last year, he was a bit more relaxed. He didn't have the pressure that he has this year. Yeah, Babikov. Babikov stays uh, on form, on target. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of skiing to, to make up Babikov. But uh, that's a very, very good performance from him. It has always been a strength, hasn't it? Uh, the accuracy, the ease Babikov has through the rifle. But with his ski speed, Mike, the coaches are always going to go for the athlete that can ski a bit faster. Yes, they want the, the medal, the gold medal, don't they? They want the athlete that's on a good day shooting. They can achieve the, 
the top spot. Yeah, and I don't think Babikov is there at the moment. Leitner with uh, strange miss on that third shot. He looks slightly perplexed by it, but four out of five. Just looking at uh, the third shoot. Talia Bo obviously still leading. Babikov, Ligrid and Loginov, the top four. Now, Benny Go. Ligrid missed two on this last shoot, remember. So, a total of four misses. Shooting not uh, as good, but... Uh, if you, if you look at, it's interesting, isn't it, Mike? We come from Roop Holding to Antolt, the easiest range on the circuit to perhaps the hardest. Oh, I think you're, I think you're right. It is, for me, it's the hardest. You, you, you have a, yes, a little recovery as you come in. There's a gentle incline the last 200 metres into the range, but the effort on the four-kilometre track here at uh, the venue at the highest altitude in the calendar. So there you go, after four shoots, Ligrid ahead of Campbell Wright of New Zealand. His uh, name been up in highlights today. He's done exceptionally well. Christiansen in third, and uh, things will change. Just looking, Phil Maillet has gone through the first shoot, and um, he's down, he's missed one. So he's down in 21st position, the World Cup leader. Ligrid, of course, wearing the red, having won the first and only individual 20 kilometer we've had so far this year. Fabian Cloud, not a name. Well, we see him a lot, but uh, it's easy to forget that he's in the top 12 of the World Cup standings. He's having an excellent season. Smolski, top right hand corner of the screen. Smolski, three, three, three races in Roop holding, and he was on the podium and each and every one of them in third position. Well, here's Phil Maillet, second shoot, and the standing shoot has been immaculate so far this year. Very light on the trigger finger, lovely, absolutely perfect, didn't change the tactics at all from uh, what we saw in the relay the other day, and Canton Phil Maillet uh, is going uh, up the order. 21st, remember, after the first shoot, We've got uh, Talia Bo at 19.05. He's going to be roughly a minute outside that. Fion Maillet looking a little tired on his skis, Patrick, but uh, he's one of the few athletes who didn't alter his normal shooting pace. Uh, up here at altitude, he just built his position and did his normal procedure. Most have backed off uh, a couple of seconds on the range. Well, it's already developing into another battle between the Norwegians and the French. And, well, it's a decade now, at least, Mike, that Norway and France have been the top two nations. Yes, uh, they have. I think they've lifted the sport, the com competition between these two nations so strong. And now Russia coming back uh, into the top level as well. Yeah. Big moment for Talia Five out of five to keep. Fion Maillet and Jacqueline away. That's not the good start. A little bit of tension there. Oh, oh. disaster. Absolute so. disaster, and just as you said at the start of the day, Mike, it's often the last shoot where he falls apart. Two misses uh, doesn't sound so bad in the context of things, but when you're trying to win the race, that is the worst possible shoot. So two misses, he's still got the lead by uh, only 10 seconds over Khalili. Wow, one more target down would have made such a difference for Talia Bo. Then you still would have been thinking about winning, but could he win with 18? I'm not sure. Well, uh, given that uh, Lagrid has missed three today, it's not an easy day, Patrick. And coming from Roop Holding, uh, a lot of the athletes have, are finding this range even more difficult. As we've said many times, with the lack of air, you can't get your breathing under control easily. So, from one brother to the other. Johannes Tinas has already had his two misses. 
quicker on the tracks than his older brother. Well, I think if he hits three and he hits the remaining five in the stand position, then he might still challenge uh, Tavia. What about Jacqueline? No misses so far. This is looking good. Ski speed is down, definitely, but is he saving something for the last eight kilometers? Absolutely brilliant. Do you know, I love his strategy today, eh? Jacqueline. Eh? Johannes Tingis Bowes skied past him, taking a minute out of him uh, and more, but uh, so far he's hit 15 out of 15. Is he looking laboured or is he just looking relaxed? I think he's probably looking a little bit relaxed. Got to remember the French haven't taken any time off. Uh, so they raced in Roop holding last week. The Norwegians deciding to get some altitude training in. As we have a look at the standings after shoot number three, uh, Jacqueline going uh, right up the order with 15 down, and he joins uh, a pretty small group of uh, athletes who are still clear after that third shoot. In terms of the fourth shoot, we've got, what, no one clear at the moment. The best is Khalili, who's hit 19 out of 20. Yes, only four out of 43, Patrick, after the third shoot have hit all 15 targets. It, it is a very testing day on the range. I really feel for Tarja Boa, 0 0 0. He looked strong, he looked stable in stand position, but I think his mind gets in the way. He feels tension as he uh, goes through his procedure. Off looking just slightly more hunched than usual in that stand position. Not as comfortable, certainly didn't inspire confidence, but he will regret those two misses. Christiansen into the finish, having missed four. And uh, a lot of big names missing, which uh, opens up an opportunity for some of the lesser known athletes. So Christensen, a new lead time, it's not going to last too long. No one who's finished so far has done better than 17 out of the 20. And, um, Campbell Wright will be, should be the first man in, or maybe Lazuski might be the first man in who's uh, hit 18 out of 20. Likrit. Here comes the red bib, and uh, well, it'd be interesting to see how much damage those two misses do to his chances of uh, winning the individual Crystal Globe, which of course he did last year. So out of character uh, for Ligrid to miss two from five shots last time in. That has been his strength, but uh, deserted him today. Yeah, so I don't know if you read the interview with uh, Anastasia Kuzmina, Mike, who was just slightly puzzled by the fact that so many teams miss out World Cups at this stage of the season. She was a firm believer that the best way to prepare for the Olympic Games is to race. Uh, and what have they got? They've got 16 days from today before the first of the Olympic races. Yes, I think the repetition, and it looks to me like the French, like uh, Fionn Maillet, Jacqueline, have been briefed, OK, race today, but don't absolutely take yourself to the limit. Yeah, Babikov is taking himself to the limit in terms of concentration here. Is he going to be the first to go clear? He waits and he waits. The target continues to move around the site, but the reflexes are good. Anton Babikov with the first 20 out of 20. Philip Deld Anderson gets uh, five down. That looked better. That was uh, more like his natural speed. No hesitation, no nerves involved. Benny Dole with four. 
This is uh, and a close miss. <laughs> yeah, that's an awkward little corner there, Mike. It's it's you're really focused when you've uh, completed your shooting. All you want to think about is getting back on the track and fighting hard. And then you've got an athlete that is only thinking of the finish line, the last 200 meters of a 20 yeah. kilometer. And it is a it is a hot spot for collision potential. Yeah. Well, I remember the British Championships when they had a, a crossover of, <laughs> of, of 90 degrees. And uh, <laughs> I think I've still got the bruises, having been taken out by a, a, a six foot six wide Marine. <laughs> I couldn't believe what happened that day, and I heard that you had been catapulted from racing <laughs> to, to about five meters airborne and then landing on your back. I had no idea because I was uh, I was in the race, but uh, yeah, it must but, have wounded you. <laughs> but seriously, here, if you've got two athletes involved in a finish uh, and, and winding it up for a sprint finish, and you've got someone coming out of the out of the range, uh, you're almost definitely going to have an incident. Shoma for USA. Nice technique. I think he comes from the same uh, place as Jesse Diggins. Diggins, of course their top cross-country skier and will certainly be looking for medals come uh, Beijing. Yes, Shomare, he is he's good at this race, only missing two in uh, Ostersund, the first race of the season, finishing 22nd. So, Fionnier. A little bit of work to do with that miss early on, but uh, he's just about made up for that. Tadia Bo with the fastest time after the first shoot, the second shoot, the third shoot, but then missing two after his fourth shoot. Exactly the same as first time in, no it's not. He missed the very first shot of the race. That's going to dent the confidence a bit, Mike. He's been riding a, a wave the side of, size of Nazare over the last, uh, what, three, four weeks. Hasn't been able to do anything wrong. And suddenly, a little look of concern on the face of Fionn Maye. Here comes Talia Bo. Will this be good enough for a top three? 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. Had he got the four zeros, almost certainly he was going to be uh, top uh, one or two. But uh, those two misses open the door for a big number of athletes, to be honest. Well, that's the situation I was talking about. It's, it's just too, it's, it's not acute enough, the, jo the joining of the two tracks. I think they're going to have to change that before the Olympic Games come here, Mike. I think they will, yes. Yeah, uh, four years' time, that, that will be the case. Khalili missing one. It's still a, a good performance. Might still remain as a, as a podium by the end of the day, but, of course, Babikov uh, may change that. Yeah, Khalili in sixth place after three shoots. Uh, choose that one rather than the fourth one, because so few people have been through the fourth shoot. What have we had? 35, so only a third of the field uh, have gone through the fourth and final shoot. Uh, Talia Bo will be uh, angry with himself with those two misses. Spent a long time on the last shot as well, Mike, and missed it. Oh, I, th I think it's... Uh, and he, he never, I think I mentioned at the start of the programme, he's never hit the perfect 20 out of 20, and, and it is always those last... the last time into the range. Uh, and... and I think that uh, that's an easy aspect to work on. It's just it's just trying to preempt that situation and deal in your mind with how to calm yourself down in that extreme pressure moment. What's the longest you've spent on any one shot? <laughs> I, I, can't, I think it was certainly over uh, 16 seconds. Uh, I think you, you you have to just get on with it. You know you can't hold it. It's a reducing spiral. It, it gets harder. So. If he can hit five, he might have finished, but goes into the lead. In fact, uh, he may not match Babikov. Let's just have a close look at that. That's more like it. That's the Talia Bo that wins uh, overall World Cup titles, not the one that uh, waits and waits and waits and thinks about it too much. 
He just let those go. There was a tiny, tiny bit longer delay between four and five, but uh, a much better shoot from Johannes Tingisbo goes up into fourth position. And at the time, as you saw, 107 outside Babikov, who shot the perfect score. So uh, top three is still possible for Johannes Tingis. And look at that, there's Jacqueline. Johannes started one minute behind him, so Jacqueline just on a what feels like a, a cruise for him today. Well, the game plan didn't work to take it easy to reduce the pulse or just hold back being tired. Why did he miss two? I can't figure that out. He was so ready to hit five there. So, Jacqueline, poor performance in the sprint. Here's uh, Babikov, still has the lead at 18.7. This is uh, a fabulous effort from him. If Babikov wins this, Mike, <laughs> the Russian selectors have only put him down as a reserve. <laughs> well, he'll rebound ahead of all the rest, including Vloganov, if, if that is the case. And Babikov is always for uh, hitting 20 out of 20. He has achieved it three times in his career. And there's not many people that uh, do that in their career. It looks like on the last uh, lap, though, Patrick, Babikov is losing so much time to Tarja Bo. He left the range 46 behind at 18.7. He only had uh, 14 seconds advantage. Yeah, maybe there's a, a last-minute sprint. Uh, the, the final section, to be honest, though, Mike, is a little bit easier as you come back down out of the meadow, down under the road, and then you've only got that little climb. I say little, but it's uh, <laughs> only, what, some 12 seconds of skiing before you into the level of the finish. Well, here is Babakov. He's obviously been warned that he's losing time to Tadia Bo. He certainly stepped it up. This is the start of the downhill section. Not easy to make a lot of time here. Yes, Babakov was totally on his limit there. As you say, this is an easy section, but he needs to get some recovery to try and hold the, his advantage. He has won before, but only once, and that was way, way back in 2017. It was a pursuit in uh, Ustersund at the start of the season. And now, at the age of 30, a win would be very, very welcome indeed. He comes from Ufa, which is down the south of Russia, where they, uh, they're they more interested in ice hockey than uh, biathlon. But they've produced one or two very good athletes over the, t over the time. Hidden Salu, 11th place for the Finn. That will do. Still 9.4 to the good, Mike. I think uh, he's going to be able to hang on in from here. He's only lost, what, some uh, five seconds over the last 800 metres, and he's only got 400 to go. I think, uh, I think Babikov will survive and move into top spot. I'm just seeing if anyone else has been through shoot three and threatening his position. I, th I think later uh, Svetkov, I uh, don't think he's come in yet for the first shoot. Svetkov's another athlete like Babikov. He, in this race, the individual, he lifts his game and uh, often hits 20 out of 20. Well, this could well be his second ever win. I can't see uh, anyone who's threatening him at the moment. Fiume, of course, uh, with mistakes and Babikov comes in to record a time 49 46 winning time when we were last here from logging off of 48 41 so we're some way outside that well there goes Philip Gerald Anderson that that's his chance I thought he could uh, potentially challenged Babikov, but he needed, I think, 19 hits today. Yeah. 
Benny Vega likewise, but he's already missed two. Missed uh, a lot of the season so far, Benny Vega. Didn't race in Oberhof, didn't race in Rupolding. He was uh, he was going pretty well at the start of the season. He was, and that isn't that great. He missed two out of ten, uh, the first ten shots, and then all ten hits. Uh, most people work the opposite way. They drop off as fatigue uh, is felt through the legs, through the body, through the breathing. Yeah, similar to what he did in the Olympics, actually, Mike. He went 1-0-0-0 zero, 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 uh, in Pyeongchang, finished in sixth position. So he's got that strength to hold his form at the end of the race, as we see Jacqueline and Claude. Claude uh, just making his way into the final stages. This is a, a good result, sixth position. He may well pick up one more place uh, to the line. Now, what about Johannes Tingis? Despite three misses, uh, still up in fourth place. So he's skiing exceptionally well. When he came out of the range, uh, he was, what, a minute and seven down on Babikov. So he's closed the gap, but he's, uh, he's run out of time. He's run out of snow. He will not catch the Russian who leads at the moment. Fabian Cloud, Claude here, or Cloud, I should say, uh, with three misses today. That's pretty much average. It, it feels that way today. Um, and again, as you said, from the easiest venue last week to the most difficult uh, with the altitude thrown in, uh, a lot of athletes struggling on the range. And sixth position for Cloud. So Russia lead with Babikov. Norway in two with Tadia Bo, the best of the Norwegians in the World Cup so far this season. Kalili puts two Russians in the top three. Ligrid down in four. Fiume with the, an absolute meltdown on that second prone position. Damage limitation. Might as well go for it. Uh, he doesn't want, want to really want to be here anymore. Uh, he's had so much success, Mike, that I think he found, found a failure quite hard to cope with. Very much. And, and the last thing you want prior to the Olympic Games is to lose the magic that he's had all season. Uh, there's always a risk when you're tired that that is the scenario. I think uh, David Komatsi is unlucky. Look at the weather coming in just uh, as he started shooting. Yeah, we've had a few squalls in this stadium over the years. And uh, <laughs> banners flying all over the place. Just like Cloud, missing one on each of the first three shoots and then finally getting it together for the last one. Goes into fifth position. So the shooting scores of the top five, zero for Babikov, two for Burke, Kalili. 19 out of 20, good good shooting from him. Then Ligrid missed three, Detour missed three, Loganoff missed three, Cloud missed three. This weather for Sklenarik, uh, it hasn't been a positive time in for a second prone. And often as a, as a young athlete learning your trade at World Cup, uh, you need to experience these situations a couple of times. I thought Johannes Tingis Bo Patrick would catch Kalili's time. He still had, what, some four seconds to find at 300 meters to go. For Kalili, 48 seconds off the leader. He's got 18 seconds. It's going to be close, Mike. It's going to be close, but a sprint finish is not uh, Johannes Tingis' strong point. 10 seconds. He's got about 100 meters. Uh, he needs a uh, little bit of coaching from. Usain Bolt, two, he's just oh. outside. Kalili survives on the podium spot. And Johannes Tingis, uh, he knows that one more shot and he would have had the lead uh, taken away from uh, Babikov. It's better though, Mike. There's a it's bit, so there's much a better. Sign that's, that, yeah, the skiing is coming back. Yeah, so many positives. The ski speed is great today. Faded towards the end, but much better. Yeah. He, of course, will be trying to defend his Olympic champion uh, title when he goes out to China. Jacqueline will be looking for the pursuit title, no doubt, having won the two la last two world championships in that discipline. 
And isn't it a strange day? The two athletes at the top of the overall world standing, uh, both having a very negative day. Fio Maillet with a shooting, Jacqueline with a ski speed. And Seb Samuelson, who's not even here. Swedes have taken this week off to get themselves in condition for the Worlds. I didn't hear your answer. Does anything prepare you for racing other than racing? I don't think so. You can do uh, absolutely do all these magic drills and you build a routine, but nothing uh, builds you up for this, especially for me, the last three shots, if you've hit the first uh, 17, it's very hard. Only that scenario can put you under the pressure that you feel. Yeah, it was all going pretty well for Jacqueline, but uh, we thought he was pacing. You can tell from his loss of balance uh, coming up the hill, his form that we saw in Annecy is no longer there. Uh, that will be a big concern for the R French team. Stegmaier of Sweden, great shooting. Uh, he's not skiing the same as the others, but uh, still, three out of three with uh, clean sheets. That could well produce a, a PB for him. Certainly could, yes. I think worrying, very worrying times for the two best of the French team today. But it's given uh, Dechou and, of course, uh, Cloud a top 10 position. So they really are the best two French athletes today. Benny Vega starting number 50 today, pretty much in the halfway point on the start sheet. Is he 32 now? Seems he's been around for 30 years, but uh, <laughs> he's the sort of athlete that always gets noticed because he's got a bigger beard than anyone else. He certainly has. And uh, yes, and uh, in Oberhof, he had to have that isolation period. I thought he'd come back strong uh, after his COVID, but uh, maybe the next race here. Well, I think he's, got, he's done well to get back at all, to be honest. So Babikov still leading, Campbell Wright still on the second page of the result sheet, 14th place at the moment, 18 hits out of 20, might even improve on his uh, 25th place that he got in the sprint in Rupolding last week. What a great effort from Babikov for now. He stays top of the leaderboard. Uh, we'll just sort of cast our eye over the later starters. I mean, all the favourites go in groups one and two, so it's highly unlikely that that performance is going to be bettered, especially as Babikov has managed to hit uh, the full quota of targets. I see, Patrick, uh, Svetkov has not actually started... Uh I'd heard that he was going to start. Clearly, there was an issue -ish this morning. Uh, so, no big threat. I thought Svetkov may be the only athlete that can challenge Babikov's time. Yeah, Svetkov pulling out. Serik Fostov of Russia also pulling out just before the race. Uh, I didn't get an answer as to why. Um, I know there's been a lot of COVID testing going on. The Americans, uh, on the latest report, were the only team to have an individual who tested positive. So, that individual is in isolation but it may also have been a problem in the Russian team. We don't know. Well, here comes Benny Vega and um, putting in a big burst as he goes past number 91, which was Philip Field Anderson. Anderson in for... What's that? Shoot number three or four? Benny Vega needs to find, uh, well, 11 seconds on... Over the next 300 metres, not possible uh, to take Paul Schoma away from... Position 10. Yeah, the margin stayed pretty similar over the last uh, kilometer or so. So I think Shoma should survive. He will survive at 226 behind. Jacqueline on 244. I think. Uh, He's okay, Benny Dole, 
244 is going down. Penny Vega going into 11th position, which is where he was when he went through the 19-kilometer uh, stage. So good effort from uh, Benny Vega. Has to be happy with that. Starting to show the form we saw in uh, Ustersund at the beginning of the season. So uh, obviously he has rid himself of the COVID virus and is back to his best. Now Anderson shot number three. It's the next nine. Could well finish in the top ten. Great speed from Phil Moye into the base of that climb and uh, very, very sharp on his feet. But the other two athletes coming in are preparing for their next shoot. Phil Maye, on the other hand, is coming in to the finish. So that's why he's at uh, full stretch. Tyshenko. Just thinking, Patrick, the intensity that uh, Phil Maye has been racing since Christmas. He's having to push so hard now, having five minutes penalty. He wants to damage limit the World Cup standing points. He'll still be uh, at the top of the field, I think, at the end of the day. But very tiring uh, leading into the Olympics. Yeah, but he's he's very much in control with Samuelson away. Mike, he's his nearest competitor, 97 points behind. Emilian Jacqueline is 1-1-1, uh, 111 points behind. I thought 111 was a sign of abundance and prosperity. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly meant to be the start of a new cycle, and I think Jacqueline will be hoping that uh, it will, that will happen pretty quickly. The last three races have not been good. Stalled up. Well, Excellent. Uh, yep, nice way to go into the last shoot. And actually, not a bad time at all. He could be on for a top 20 finish. Big, big margins today at the moment. Three minutes 50 separating the top 20. Yeah, Stolder uh, stepping in, sorry, uh, to, to replace uh, Germany, Jeremy Finello. So Smolski into 18th. I had him down for a top 10 today, but it hasn't quite worked out. I think uh, he's one of the athletes struggling with the altitude. A 20 kilometer, Patrick, with prone, then stand, then prone again. It's some 20 minutes when you come in for your second prone, uh, over 20 minutes since you last shot. So the conditions are changeable, and every athlete really has been adjusting their sights as they come in. Perfect. Yeah, he looked like a man who's done a bit of training here. And have a look at the flags, because that was not easy conditions. And Bionar rattled through them. Five out of five, 14 out of 15. Uh, he moves into a pretty exclusive group. He goes, uh, as you might just have heard, into the top 12. And that's, uh, at the moment, one of his best races of the season. He's just in behind uh, David Komatz of Austria. Uh, Christian Gower, Canada at that stage was in 10th position, 2.45 down. Yes, on Bio and I, he, he did impress us last day on this year uh, with his best ever result, finishing 13th. He only missed one last year, uh, but as you see, his, that magic that he had last year has kind of deserted him this season until, well, this particular day. Sakna again. Uh, Consistently good, good races. That's 17th in Rupp holding last week. Now uh, 23rd. Good news. 
Well, it seems early in the day to say it, but I'm not convinced that the top three are going to change. Um, when we have a look, uh, Svekov, we mentioned, who was going to start number 99, has withdrawn. Maybe, Mike, Marco Gross can do something, who starts number 107. Uh, he is, of course, the son of Rico. Uh, things haven't been going particularly well for Marco, but uh, his dad has financed him. Uh, they decided to go to the German Championships, uh, really, to finish off his season. But he went and won the sprint. So here he is getting his debut in a World Cup race. He started 107, and we'll do our best to track his performance as the race goes on. Well, Rico Gross will be very, very nervous. He's wearing the Austrian, uh, he's scoping for the Austrian team. But, and Rico has finished twice in second place in this race here uh, when he was racing. Eight seconds is this quite a long uh, pause to hold, but it's paid off for Labastu. Pretty good today, missing only two targets. Three and a half minutes, that would normally put him out of the World Cup points, which is the top 40. But today, it's uh, good enough for the top just outside the top 20 so if he can uh, up his speed he could get himself some very very useful world cup points today Hartweg for switzerland best of the swiss at the moment benny vega sitting in at 11th and then we have to go all the way down to jaeger who's down in 35th at the moment oh first miss from stegmaier Oh, that is painful, isn't it? Yeah, that's very painful now. Oh, and he knows that when he comes here next year, that is what the commentator's going to pick up on, the fact that he missed three on his last shoot, having put in a really, really solid performance up to that stage. Three minutes added, over a kilometre in terms of distance. You can just feel the energy had uh, left him there to pick up three added minutes with only four k's to go. So there are your top ten, with Babikov, Burt and Khalili leading the way. Good day for the Russians again, Mike. Did brilliantly in Oberhof. Not quite as good in um, Rupolding, but solid. And then uh, two of the top three here in Antolts at the moment. Campbell Wright still in the top 15. Did they make their decision 24 hours too early? It looks like it. Well, Mike, I wonder, will, um, what, was, what were the requirements for, from the New Zealand Federation to get to qualify for the Olympics? Was it top yes. 15? It stated top 16 uh, in order to, to, you know, potentially get a diploma when you're at the Olympics for the top eight. So to show that top 16 standard in order to have a respectable result there at the Olympic Games. And, and they're, yeah. they're putting these high standards throughout all their winter sports. Yeah, well, he's currently lying in 15th, uh, you know, with the points that he's accrued this year. New Zealand had... A, a quota place if they wanted it. Uh, is there any comeback having made the decision? Uh, what was it, 24 hours ago? Do you know, there could be. I, I did look last night, late last night, at those who'd been selected for New Zealand. He wasn't included in the lists that I saw. And uh, with a 15th today, at uh, a 19-year-old, the experience he would gain from, uh, from going to the Olympics would be incredible. He's a top-class biathlete today to finish 15th in yeah, the absolutely. World Cup before the Olympics. Quite amazing. Yeah. And, and I remember we were in, well, I was certainly slightly critical of um, Andrew Musgrave and Andrew Young's uh, inclusion in the Olympic team in Vancouver back in 2010 because they got so soundly beaten. But uh, I'm glad to say I was proven wrong because that experience has really helped them over the last decade.
it, it really has, and uh, certainly the the base that uh, Campbell Wright is would be going into the Olympics if he were to go um, is at a very high standard. He's he's there already. He's 20. It's brilliant. Seventeen for Hartvig. He'll be happy with that. That's not bad. So Hartvig uh, just finishing for Switzerland. He becomes the second best of the Swiss today. Two in the top 20, which by their standard is pretty good. Uh, Anton Babikov, the star of the day, still leading the way. Uh, he went through this stage in 40-15. Dusanov is a long, long way off that. And uh, Babikov sitting there on top, and he is... Uh, just checking before I say it, he is the only athlete to have hit 20 out of 20. And down the bottom end, we have the only athlete to have missed 10 out of 20, which is Makarov. Well, Philip Field Anderson, uh, a, a poor end to his game, missing two there. I, I hope I'm right seeing two. Uh, I think there were two shots missed there. And Yusinov, uh, one, zero, zero, two. Again, those last, uh, or the last five shots being very difficult for many athletes today. Yusinov aus uh, Kazakhstan, 36. rank. I, I thought uh, Yusinov uh, would be used to these windy conditions. The rain uh, where he trains in Almaty, uh, very often windy, difficult conditions. But uh, maybe the pressure having hit 15, 14 out of 15 into the last bout of shooting. Often when you're uh, brought in uh, as a surprise racer today, as uh, Stolder has for uh, Jeremy Finello, who wasn't well, uh, there's no pressure. So far, so good. One, zero, zero. As we watched Stolder on his last shoot, I can tell you that uh, Marco Gross has gone through the third shoot uh, and he's in the top half of the field, 50th position at the moment, having missed just two. Uh, if he can go clear on his last stand, then uh, he could well be into the World Cup points, which would be a fantastic opening race to his uh, World Cup career. It certainly would, and, and of course his partner, uh, Heike, uh, racing tomorrow in the women's field. And her season has, uh, has lifted, uh, the closer we're coming to the Olympic Games. Yeah, Heike, Wonder the only one of the Swiss women to have been selected so far. Uh -huh. I was going to say, I wonder what's going through Bionar's mind. Uh, he shot this score last year, hitting 19 out of 20, so he needs these five. And if he hits five, top ten, very much a possibility. That was a long hold of 13 seconds, and the result uh, didn't improve things at all. Long, strong gust blowing from his left. That's going to be very, very difficult for Bionat. Oh, so unlucky, so unlucky. Three misses, and suddenly, from a top 10, he's going to be struggling to get into the top 40. I think he's yeah. the most unlucky 
by athlete today the way the wind picked up uh, yes he maybe stayed too long you've got to it was quiet when he came in sometimes you've got to take the advantage uh, when the weather is good he didn't take that advantage what a real pity that is uh, to have three minutes now thrown on to a very good result yeah infuriating for him and um he, he actually missed two in the lot. He had a really good uh, individual up in Ustersund at the start of the season, being at 0, 0, 0 then missed two on the last shoot. So it's becoming a little bit of a habit. And last year, he was, he was very much more carefree at 20-year-old, no pressure whatsoever, enjoying World Cup racing. Everything is a new experience, but now that pressure changes things. Self-pressure. Well, 18 out of 20 today is not a bad score at all. Yes, the shooting score is amazing. Only one man, uh, the winner, Babikov, uh, missed, uh, hitting all targets, and two athletes, only two athletes, missing just one target. Khalili on the podium was one of them. Well, let's have confirmation of the top positions again. Absolutely nothing will change in the top 10. Babikov, Burke, Khalili take the uh, medals. Johannes Tingisbo, despite missing three, just off the podium in fourth position. Dol Christiansen, uh, Krishma in 14, Campbell Wright, 15th place. That is sensational for the New Zealander. And uh, let's hope that they reverse the decision. Uh, it would be great to see him in Beijing. We'll wait and see what happens uh, there, and particularly because he has uh, Scottish connections, as we mentioned at the start of the programme. Incredible. He certainly has. A, you need to have had achieved uh, 180 points or less, IBU points. He achieved that a long time ago, so he's certainly in the criteria, makes the grade for uh, the sport itself. Uh, it would be fantastic to see him there in uh, Beijing. Babikov may have bought himself a ticket for the 20 kilometer in Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they do tend to base it on the last uh, result of that discipline. So we will we will see. And and, and actually, Mike, uh, the teams who have six athletes, a quota of six, are in a much better position because they can rest athletes throughout the Olympic program. Would you would you advise? Uh, you know, say, Phil Maillet or Jacqueline to go for every race or to pick and choose? It's, it's, a, it's a tough, a, a, t a, t a very tough challenge to take every race on, but the previous to today, the way they were racing, I certainly would use them in every race, and they really are medal contenders in every race they start in. And you've got to consider the relays as well, but, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a good position to be in, to have two, two athletes who you could use, say, Babikov in the individual but then put um, put another athlete into the relay. They have they have good athletes. Look at their performances from Detieu, uh, sixth position today, Claude, uh, eighth position. So they've got so many top and, and medal potential athletes, the French team. It's just managing their situation now. And, and I think taking care of Phil Maillet and Jacqueline, they're, they're tired right now. Yeah, certainly are. There's, there's no doubt about that. Karlik uh, missing eight targets. That's tough. He's only uh, nine minutes, 19 seconds behind. So skiing is there, but today the shooting wasn't.
Finn Nello was uh, out there earlier. I'm assuming, Mike, uh, that was uh, that was a replacement. Finn Nello yes. was due to be racing at 96. Yes, he was. Um, and you do need a medical when you have a, a late change like that, uh, if, if it was this morning. And uh, so, yes, yeah, Stolder, uh, I think, doing very well there, being brought in late. Yeah. Christian Gao, again, the best of the Canadian athletes, with Scott Gao uh, outside the points. Scott Gao missing five today. Uh, in terms of the Americans, Sean Doherty started 72. Uh, he is down in 59th position. Jake Brown, uh, not bad, 33rd position. So he's in the World Cup points at the moment. And uh, he is uh, the second best of the Americans. Uh, Shoma has done brilliantly with uh, only 18, well, only two misses, 18 hits out of the 20. And Shoma, 226 down. He's in ninth position, a top 10. Uh, and that's fabulous news for the American team. It really is. Uh, he, he was an early starter, and I think the conditions on the range were maybe a little easier uh, for the first 20 athletes. Uh, it has been a very changeable day, but no taking that uh, away from that great result from Paul Schomer. A top 10 is a top 10 at this uh, high level. Stolder, already three and a half minutes behind. If he can keep the margin under four, then uh, he could get a top 25. It's going to be close. Goes into 25th position. Exactly, Stolder. Now, needs uh, a little burst over the final 300 metres. Well, he's got uh, six seconds from this point. If he wanted to move up one place, uh, that's Zachna ahead of him. I don't think he'll pull those six seconds, but he has a risk of uh, dropping down a little further from 25th, uh, possibly drop down to 26th, the momentum that he has here by the time he makes the finish line. Yeah, Labastu pretty much on the same time, just fractions of a second between those two going through that last split at 19.7. Still skiing nicely. Six seconds or so of effort left for Stolder. Is he staying? 25. I think he. Oh, he just misses out. Labastu quicker over the closing stages. Drops down one, but still scores decent points. 18 out of 20, pretty commendable. Well, not the best individual we've ever seen, but certainly the best one that Anton Babikov has ever done. 49, 46, uh, over a minute slower than the winning time of Alexander Loganov last year. Talia Bo again, Mike. Solid performance from him. He will close the gap on Jacqueline in the World Cup. Uh, the fight for third and fourth position. And uh, the, the good news for Johannes Tingis Bo is a lot of his sharpness. His ski speed is back. Yes, he's tired from a, a tough training camp at high altitude. He faded towards the end. But I think it's good news for Johannes Tingis Bo. Certainly looked uh, very sharp on the rifle or through the rifle for most of the, the shooting today. Only three misses. Just looking at the course time, the ski time for each of the loops. Uh, Johannes Tingisbo, as usual, the fastest on lap one, the fastest on lap two. Uh, Fion Maillet, the last, fastest on lap three, which might explain why he then went and missed three in the prone position, his third shoot. 
Uh, Simon Detourmite, fastest on lap four. And Talia Burt, who is in the hunt for the win, has produced the quickest time on the final lap. Oh, well, that was self-punishment, wasn't it, from there? Uh, from Taria Bo, missing two out of five last time in. He knew he had to punish himself on the track. Well, 13th last year for Biona, but uh, one year later, and because of those three shots missed uh, from the last five. Yeah, he could have gone top 15 had he hit five, but then <laughs> pretty much half the field could say that if they'd hit all the targets on the last shoot so let's uh, just go down the order babikoff mike only his second win in his career just the right time uh, he will be in favor when uh, if he gets to china uh Terrier Bo, you know solid winning the overall world cup what back in 2011 11 years later he is a threat to the best in the world and I think he's, uh, he's improved so much in terms of his ski speed this season, Terry Abou, at 33-year-old, many can't turn it around like he has this summer. So highly motivated, very disappointed with his last time into the range, but certainly a real challenger for all of the medals at the Olympics. It is painful racing in adults. You just can't get enough air in. <laughs> Does that remind you of the good old days? Uh, this is Khalili on that course. Just a little replay of uh, his efforts. 19 hits out of 20 from him. Uh, Tadia Bo, it was going so well until the last shoot when he missed two. Otherwise, the win could easily have been his. Uh, but uh, number 30, Anton Babikov, took his time, made sure, hit 20, he gets the win. Well, we've had snow pretty much for the second half of the race, so the the second half of the field undoubtedly getting the tougher conditions uh, more snow more wind the temperature has dropped a little with the sun going down so you'd expect uh, a little more uh, ice in the tracks but that's not the way it's turned out feel my a mike down in 20. And yes uh, yeah tough for him today but campbell wright remained in that fabulous 15th position all the way through to the to the end, uh, nobody's going to challenge at this stage. Here comes Marco Gross into the finish, 0 2 0 1. Well, his father came second in 19, 1998 and in 1997, twice second, two years in a row. Yeah. Shame about it. he dropped 15 places with that one miss on the last shoot. And I think he might just be the last of the Germans in the uh, finish area. But uh, still not a, not a bad effort. Beletsky, 9 minutes 20 behind. It's been a tough day today. And uh, certainly anyone starting between 90 and 107 has had uh, the short straw. So a great day for Babikov, another 60 points and uh, a brilliant win to start the week here in Antolz, the last of the biathlon before the Olympics.
So the standings in the World Cup, 602 points. He's 101 clear, having uh, beaten Jacqueline today. Samuelson not racing drops from two down to three. Talia Beau closes the gap a little bit, but still work to do if he wants to get into the top three come the end of the season. Latyapov slowly dropping down the order. He was up in the top six a uh, couple of weeks ago. Johannes Kern losing the effect of the win he had earlier on in the season. Lukas Hoffer down to 29. I thought we might see something from him today. But uh, Jacqueline still the number one in terms of pursuits. But uh, it's Phil Maillet who is the master in the overall this year. 101 points clear. He will stay in yellow for the next race. In fact, uh, effectively, he will be the yellow bib wear wearer when we go to the Olympic Games. It's a long time, Patrick, since we've had two Russians in this race, the 20 kilometer here in Antols on the podium. 30 years ago, Kirienko won it, Chepikov second. And that's the last time we've had uh, two Russians on the podium here. Fourth podium finish for Terry Bo this season. Not had a win yet, but uh, it should come. Race 14 of a scheduled 22. Babikov. Nothing spectacular in terms of his ski speed, but he certainly looked to be more focused than anyone else on the range. Today, it's the fourth time uh, he's managed to hit 20 out of 20 in individual races, getting close to Martin Foucault's uh, five times with 0 0 0, zero record. So great work from Anton Babikov and a big lift for the Russian team. Here he is. Fantastic day. So long since the last time you took a win. What's the emotion like? Uh, now I'm empty. I didn't feel uh, so exciting. But uh, now all my mind was, and before the race, all my mind was about Olympic Games and uh, our team. Um, I think we we are deserve to be uh, six athletes on the Olympic Games, but it's only five. And uh, for me, we don't have place. Now I think only about this on this race. And uh, now I didn't feel that it's a win, it's a gold uh, uh, gold medal here. I don't know, maybe it, a bit later I will be happier. <laughs> but how could you keep the concentration on the job and be so good at the range with so many ad misses and you had all the spots in your mind? <laughs> it's a bit secret. Uh, before the race, uh, my wife uh, sent me a video where my daughter, daughter she's young and uh, on the, uh, in the class of ballet, she made uh, some um, uh, exercise really slow but clear and on the shooting range today i think the same i need to be slower but all my concentration about clear and i do the same <laughs> well uh, i know you said it's hard to be really happy at the moment but you did a fantastic job so congratulations <laughs> thank you yeah you have to sympathize number six on the russian team list with only five going to the olympic games uh, He's a reserve, as I mentioned earlier on, but uh, the chances are the others will take their slots. Having just won a World Cup, that does fe feel very, very tough. Uh, the individual standings after two competitions, Tadia Bo is on top. Ligrid, who won the first one, just eight points behind. That, of course, will be decided at the Olympic Games. Well, in fact, it won't be decided at the Olympic Games because the Olympics don't count towards the uh, World Cup. But uh, there must be one more individual this season, Mike. 
Well, uh, the uh, the Olympics, uh, well, I think will be the last one, actually. Uh, there's certainly uh, the three World Cups after the Olympics, uh, mass start sprints mainly, and uh, the pursuit, of course. The older he gets, the better he seems to get. He has the same fight that he had when he was a 19-year-old. Another brilliant, brilliant performance from uh, Talia Bo. He'll regret the misses on the last shoot, but uh, very effective. Mike, I think there'll be a few Olympic committees that are regretting the decisions they've made over the last week or so. Uh, it's incredible. That was one of the saddest winners uh, interview, but but deeply moving almost uh, that, that we've heard. Uh, he still can't think of the joy of winning. It's only his second victory because of the selection issues. It's always a burning pain for any team and, and individuals. Four Norwegians in the top six. Betiu, the best of the French today. That's a uh, good effort from him. But we start with uh, Khalili, who gets third place yeah he's been uh, very effective this year Mike really just sort of sh showing the potential